Hello guys, let's jump into another important question. A 54-year-old obese patient, with type 2 diabetes has a history of alcoholism. In this patient, metformin should either be avoided, or used with extreme caution, because the combination increases the risk of which of the following? Here are the options. Option A disulfiram-like reaction. Option B excessive weight gain. Option C hypoglycemia. Option D lactic acidosis. Option D serious hepatotoxicity. This is a one-step question, and you can answer it straight away. But say you look at the question, and you are not sure about the answer. But don't worry, let's figure it out together. Let's jump into the options. In this question, option A is disulfiram-like reaction. It is an alcohol drug interaction, causing an unpleasant hypersensitivity to alcohol, leading to nausea, vomiting, throbbing headache, and general hangover-like symptoms, similar to the effect caused by disulfiram administration. These effects are caused by drugs, that inhibits the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, causing accumulation of acetaldehyde, a toxic metabolite of alcohol. Drugs that may produce disulfiram-like reactions with ethanol, include the following. Oral hypoglycemics like chlorpropamide, some cephalosporins like cefepirazone, cefamandol, and cefetidin, the antifungal griseofulvin. Antibiotics like metronidazole, nitrofurant 1, and sulfonamides, and many more. Now let's go to option B, excessive weight gain. Metformin is widely used and is considered a first-line therapy for diabetes management. It is an insulin sensitizer, that decreases free fatty acid release from adipose tissue. Metformin also decreases hepatic glucose output, and intestinal glucose absorption, hence has consistently demonstrated a weight loss effect. However, major therapeutic classes of medications used for type 2 diabetes, such as insulin, sulfonylureas, megalitonide derivatives, and thiazolidine dienes, have been associated with weight gain, with the potential to offset the beneficial effects of glycemic control. Option C is to rule out the chance of metformin to cause hypoglycemia. It is a well-known fact that metformin is associated with fewer hypoglycemic attacks, than insulin and sulfonylureas, and it may be the first-line pharmacological therapy of choice in these patients. Well, the next option lactic acidosis, is a commonly asked concept, in competitive pharmacy exams. Although uncommon, metformin-associated lactic acidosis, is a potentially fatal adverse effect. Significant renal and hepatic disease, alcoholism and conditions associated with hypoxia, for example, cardiac and pulmonary disease, surgery, are contraindications to the use of metformin. Other risk factors for metformin-induced lactic acidosis, are sepsis, dehydration, high dosages and increasing age. Lactic acidosis, appears to result from biguanide interference, causing an increase in production, and decrease in clearance of lactate, leading to higher cellular lactate levels. In the presence of hypovolemia and acute kidney injury, elevated metformin levels result in, inhibition of enzymes involved in gluconeogenesis, reducing conversion of pyruvate to glucose, and inhibiting mitochondrial electron transport chain, resulting in an increased conversion of pyruvate to lactate. The common symptoms of lactic acidosis includes, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, altered level of consciousness, hyperpnea, abdominal pain and thirst. The last option to this question is, hepatotoxicity. Metformin is not considered intrinsically hepatotoxic. It is only contraindicated in patients, with advanced cirrhosis, because it increases the risk of developing lactic acidosis. Now it's end of all the options. The absolute best answer to this question is option D. Lactic acidosis.